Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Zenitin. And welcome to today's video for Legends of Runeterra. Uh, World Walker is finally out. Uh, overall, I'd say most people seem to enjoy the set. Um, biggest complaint I've heard so far, I kind of agree with this, is that it seems like burn uh, and just aggressive decks in general might be a little overpowered, a little strong, and yeah, maybe, but that also could be because, like, you know, it's early on in the new season, the new set, and aggressive decks just generally do really well when people are brewing and trying out all kinds of stuff, and then a meta settles, and then the control decks come out to try and feast on the aggressive decks if they can. But uh, yeah, we're gonna be doing today's video. We're gonna be doing is a video I like to do whenever we get a new set. We're gonna go through and we're gonna talk about five fun decks that are also kind of competitively viable uh, to play in the new set that uses some of the new cards. Uh, I will say this, a quick disclaimer. Um, I'm not saying these are going to be the best of the best of the set. Uh, granted, some of these might be playable, but they might just need to be more fine-tuned. This is just to give you a good starting point if you're just having trouble figuring out where you want to start, give you a good uh, a shell, if you will, if you want to do some deck building yourself or if you're just overwhelmed by all the new cards. we got five decks here to give you a start. And I have, uh, I always try to get something for everyone. So we got some aggro decks, we got some control, some mid range. There's gonna be something here for everyone. So, um, let's get into it, right? Uh, our first deck, what do we have here? Well, first deck is a deck that a lot of people are, um, yeah, that's the way I can say it. Just like, yeah, a lot of people are not liking this deck. A lot of people are playing this deck. A lot of people are hating this deck. We got. Annie Jin Burn. So, uh, I mean, I don't know like what to say about this deck. You should know what this kind of deck is trying to do right now. Uh, get in a little bit of trip damage with your units and then finish off with some burn. There's a lot of variation to this deck. Some people are playing a uh, augmented experimenter. I'm not a fan of it. This, if you don't remember, that's the six mana three three to discard your hand to draw three, also deal three to something on the field. Now, I like whispered words a little bit better, and playing a uh, Raven Bloom Raven Bloom Conservatory as my personal preferred late game. But yeah, this deck it's um Annie's great. Uh, Annie's really good. We'll go through, we'll do this for every of the decks, every one of the decks. We'll go through the decks really quick and talk about some of the cards and why they're in here. Uh, cause I feel like a lot of these cards in here should be talked about. Most, some of them though, it's just like, yeah, it, it's a burn card. So, Annie, first off, she's so hard to kill. Like, uh, challengers are good against Annie, but that means you're playing like, what, Demacia most likely? Uh, but yeah. Uh, Crackshot Corsair and Demolish, or uh, dem uh, I can't say this, Demolitionist were nerfed recently, but they're still really good. Um, plus Corsair, Legion Saboteur, Boom Crew Rookie, all turbo level, both Jin and Annie. Uh, leveling up Annie is really good. Leveling up Jin is really good. Basically, when Jin levels up, his attack basically turns into a, every time he attacks, he decimates your opponent. And then you've got... A lot of burn here. What is this? 4, 8, 12, and then here's 9. That's 21 points of burn just from spells. Obviously, you're not going to draw at all. Uh, I also like Mana Soul Student. Mana Soul Student just helps to accelerate the Annie and Jin levels up, and it helps give you more um, Virtuoso Lotus Trap triggers for your Jin. So, big fan of the deck. You also got some more burn here in the form of Doom Beast. The heal lets you race against other aggressive decks. Uh, but there is definitely some room to uh, experiment, but this is a good starting point in my opinion. Uh, I'd say like Ravenbloom Conservatory is a flex spot. Uh, there are spells that you can put in as well that aren't in this deck, like uh, Ravenous Flock. Uh, some people like Disintegrate as well. I'm not a big fan of Disintegrate, but there's a lot of stuff you can consider for this deck. But if you just want to go fast and be the annoying burn guy, start off with this deck. So. 
what do we have next? Well, our next deck, um, no new champions. We got a reputation deck here. Uh, now you might say, streamer, why no severe? Uh, in all honesty, the main reason was someone was like, hey, can you play a Renekton deck on my stream? And I was like, sure, I think Renekton LeBlanc uh, reputation is pretty solid. It is. Uh, and also because I think Renekton works really well with Whirling Death, uh, Strikes in general. So I'm a fan of this deck. Uh, I did fairly well with it, Bullying Elusives. But yeah, mostly uh, I wanted to play a Reputation deck that plays Grey Apothecary um, without trying to meme too hard by playing the five mana landmark that summons a Sandstone Charger. Uh, Grey Apothecary, while it's very, very high variance, um, it is really annoying for your opponents. Uh, the cute combo with Threshing Snapper and Vulnerable Givers like Exhaust turns the Threshing Snappers into other five plus power cards, which is very cute. Uh, only playing two Grey Apothecaries because it is a little bit of a uh, tempo loss, and this deck doesn't really want to lose too much tempo, but it helps you grind in certain matchups, so I like that. Uh, but yeah, definitely did okay with this deck on stream today. Uh, Incisive Tactician just rallies and gets some aggro face overwhelm damage in. Uh, Renekton is Renekton. He's, you know, he's, he does what he does. He's a big guy. Overwhelms. Uh, another reason why I like him is because of the Overwhelm compared to Severe, who doesn't have Overwhelm. Uh, you could definitely try out Severe instead and play, like, Mites or something. But I like what I got right here so far. Uh, but yeah, like, let's say you wanted to play Severe. I'll give you a quick uh, example of how I would change his deck if I wanted to play Severe. First off, I would just take out the three Renektons, play three Severes. Simple start. And probably take out two shape stones or two mites, but I really feel like the chip overwhelm damage from Renekton is just so much better. Uh, maybe though, Severe is better because of spell shield, but who knows? But yeah, overall, great deck. Uh, solid. I don't think this deck is going to be a top tier deck, but it does feel nice. Like Reputation's a fun deck. Uh, so if you're looking to play like with Grey Apothecary and some more Reputation, this is the deck for you. Also plays another new card, Chamber of Renewal. Uh, mostly we want to play like Chamber of Renewal on three for Renekton. It's okay to play it uh, and give uh, LeBlanc Spell Shield as well. But it's mostly for Renekton. Also makes it so Renekton helps trigger Reputation. So that's nice as well. Uh, but yeah, fun deck. Not much to talk about here. You can also consider putting in Captain Farron, but Tactician is our late game, our win con of choice, but Farron is also obviously something you can consider. But yeah, not much to talk about with this deck because it's Reputation. You probably know Reputation by now. Let's go to our next deck, of course. Uh, our next deck also has uh, two of the new champions. We got Bard and Ilawi. So, what is this deck? There's so many Bard decks. I don't even know where to start with Bard. Uh, it looks like Bard is turning out to be the Zoe slash Aphelios of this set where Bard's just getting thrown in with a lot of different champs because chimes are just so good. Um, I like Bard Ilawi a lot. Uh, Ilawi just gives you some nice early game. Most more like her tentacles give you early game. Tentacle Smash is such good removal. Um... And then Bard buffing up your units is, of course, really nice with the chimes. Like, Zap Sprayfin getting just one chime buff is huge. Croaker getting a buff is nice, too. Watchful Idol getting buffs is actually kind of big, too. So I really like this card, or I really like this deck. Uh, Ilawi getting buffs is big, too, because she has Overwhelm. Uh, her going up to 7 health makes her so hard to kill. Uh, we also got a couple Blood in the Waters. Um, so many decks just don't play around blood in the water and i can't blame them it's a new card but i have won so many games thanks to blood in the water getting in a nice attack and my opponent's like okay i survived the attack that's great i'll play like one big unit or whatever and i just play blood in the water and attack again with the big overwhelmed tentacle that i had or the big ilawi i have because you know every time ilawi attacks she grows a tentacle and grows her attack and a i just think Ilawi just synergizes really, really well with multiple attacks. 
And then, of course, Bard also kind of synergizes with multiple attacks, too, putting in some more chimes. So very, very fun deck. Um, definitely a deck still in progress. Maduli is a little slow and a little clunky and win more, but there's not really much else to play in this slot up here as a top end. Um, like, there's what? You could consider... Riptide Rex, but Riptide Rex is even more expensive and even slower, but yeah. I think it's fine to play with Dually. We do have a decent amount of uh, draw too here with three Eye of Naga Kuburos. And Eye of Naga Kuburos does give you draw for Bards level two, which is kind of cute. Uh, you might also want to consider maybe another two mana spell. We're only playing two zaps, but we only have three zap hits. So you can consider another spell or two for a zap, like maybe a one of Make It Rain. Um, you can also consider the stun spell. The five mana stun chime spell is another thing to consider. There's a lot of variation you can do with this deck. Uh, I like this. This is probably my favorite Alawi deck. Um, as for my favorite bard deck, well, there's so many different bard decks to try out, so I'm still working on that, but I love this Alawi deck the most. Uh, other Alawi decks I like as well are Aphelios Alawi. Uh, I tried Soraka Alawi. I just felt it was a little too slow and couldn't catch up too much on tempo. But yeah, very fun deck. Now, our next deck is a deck that I really was excited to build during um, spoiler season. But the problem is the game seems to have gotten even faster and this deck is really, really slow. I'm talking about Viego Legion Deserter. Uh, I really like the list right here that I got. Um, Elise gives you some solid early game along with the House Spiders. Katarina rallies with Legion Deserter is nice, plus Katarina gives you the Blade's Edge, which combos really well with Disintegrate and Flock. Um, we're playing Disintegrate over Scorched Earth, mostly because I just don't think there are enough landmarks that I want to kill with Scorched Earth, and if there aren't a lot of landmarks, I think Disintegrate is better than Scorched Earth. Uh, rest of the deck is about what you would expect, you know, Hydrovines, Camivore, and Soldiers, because we're a Viego deck. Uh, Arachnoid Sentry Flock because that, that combo is great. Vengeances because it's Vengeance. Uh, Atrocity because we're a Viego deck. Vile Feast and Glimpses because they're pretty much staples of Shadow Isles. Uh, Legion Deserters, of course, because we're a Legion Desert deck. Uh, a couple of Haunted Tombs. I really like this card. Reviving things like Viego, Legion Deserters, Hydrovines seems pretty strong in my opinion. Could just replace this with maybe like some healing maybe a maybe a um a ladros maybe rekindlers there's there's definitely a flex spot but i like it um and if you don't understand like the deck well legion's deserter gains all allied buffs camivoran soldier specifically encroaching miss uh encroaching miss actually is a plus two plus two for legion deserter because encroaching miss buffs other encroaching miss and Viego, so it's technically giving two everywhere buffs, and Legion Deserter takes up both of them. So the first Legion Deserter uh, encroaching miss buff will make him a 7 6, which is pretty big. Turn three, Camivore and Soldier. Turn four, Camivore and Soldier, eh, Soldier, and you'll have a turn five, nine, eight with Overwhelm. Very tough for a lot of decks to deal with that. Uh, but that's the deck idea. Having a lot of fun playing this deck. But our next deck, our last deck, is the deck I probably play the most of. I'm talking about Thresh, Aurelian, Soul. Only a couple new cards in this deck, but I love this deck so much. Um, I will be honest with you, I am being a little greedy with my build. You can definitely take out some of the cards and get a little less greedy, but I'm just a greedy control player who likes to dirtle around. Uh, I've been bullying some burn players with this deck, but because of my greed, it does feel like... I am having a little trouble with burn, but that's an easy fix. Just, you know, take out some of the late game for more early game, like either heals or more two drops or one drops. So you might say, okay, what's the new thing with Thresh and Relion Soul? Because this is an older deck we're just updating. Uh, pretty much exactly the same champ base and unit base. Uh, just a lot of some invoke stuff, some units to just try and buy time. Three Threshes, two Aurelian Souls. Our two new cards, or three new cards, sorry, are... Undergrowth, Dragon Roost, and Celestial Trifecta. Undergrowth is so big. Mystic Shot is a great card for PNZ control decks. This is basically Mystic Shot, but for one extra mana and the trade-off, and that one extra mana means we can drain too. 
So more life steal. Um, Soul Steel Trifecta is mostly a card I'm trying out here. You might say like, isn't Star Shaping better? Not necessarily. Star Shaping only gives one card, but it does heal you for four. For an extra mana, you're losing out on the heal four, but you're getting two more cards. So it is a lot of cards you're getting, but the problem is it's very, very greedy, which is why I like it. Uh, as for the rest of the deck, just, you know, your standard SI Targon control pile, some life gain here. I'm also considering a box here in the deck, uh, maybe even another Withering Mist. Uh, you know, Ruination, Atrocity, Vengeance, Atrocity, Aurelian Soul, Atrocity, a big Celestial wins games. Uh, and then three Dragon Roost. I feel like I have to explain the Dragon Roost because a lot of people during my stream did not understand why I'm playing Dragon Roost in this deck. Our early game is okay, but we could use more. And here's the thing. We only have one other three drop. Solar Priestess. You might say, well, you can play other things earlier. Yeah, but here's the thing, though. Some of these cards kind of suck in the late game, like Shield Bearer sucks, Mountain Goat sucks in the late game as well. Dragon Roost is such a strong play, in my opinion, in the early game, like pre-turn five. You play it on three, pops out on six. Huge, huge tempo swing. Um, if you're against a more aggressive deck, sure, you can. it's also just discard fodder to a Spacey Sketcher. If I didn't have Spacey Sketcher, I would not play three Dragon Roost, but because of Spacey Sketcher, I can be like, okay, I top decked uh, Dragon Roost, I'll just discard it or um, whatever. If you don't have Spacey Sketchers and you're in a top deck battle against your opponent where you're both like out of cards and trying to top deck a really strong card and you top deck Dragon Roost, sure, that feels bad, but that's true of a lot of decks. But getting in Vialis Vox on six is such a huge tempo swing, in my opinion. So many games with Thresh Aesol of that I've played have been won because of that big tempo swing where Vox comes down or pops out of the Dragon Roost, basically stonewalls my opponent and holds the board. And then, of course, like getting some dragons is nice too. Like I've gotten Screeching Dragons, Eclipse Dragons. Uh, I think I even hit a Camavoran Dragon once, the 4-3 that drains whenever it kills something. So that was pretty nice. Uh, but yeah, I really like this deck. I think it's very strong uh, for now, but in the future, maybe not. Um, so yeah, that is all five decks that I will recommend. Um, there's a lot of decks, though, to try out. So, you know, if you don't find anything here you like, go and you know, search around and you'll find something or, you know, make your own deck. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to hear your opinion on this set and uh, World Walker in general. Uh, what do you think of the set? Uh, and What kind of decks are you playing? And if you guys just enjoyed the video in general, I'd love it if you could leave a like or a comment down below. Always helps me on the channel out. And if you guys want to watch, keep up with the Legends of Runeterra content, you can always go and subscribe to the channel as well. And if you want to watch me play some Legends of Runeterra, I've been playing it a lot recently because of the new set, in fact. You can always go and check me out over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash where I stream pretty much every single day. Anyway, though, with that all said and done, thank you all again once more for watching this video. And until I see you guys in the next one, uh, bye.